we uh, talked about the uh, partial neural property. That's a very interesting part what we actually learned this time. Let's say any property uh, if, if I, uh, which is, what is that? A9, F5, right? Any property. Higher component. Oh, sorry, not F5, uh, this is, this should be F, right? F is extensive property. And this specific property is some SC one X I right? So that's the way we actually uh, we define and uh, we are talking about the we derived about the V I bar, right? We got a very nice derivation about V I bar. And uh, because V V uh, V equals to summation N I V I bar. And VI bar equals to what is the VI bar? Rho V by rho NI P P N J J not equals to correct. And then uh, from here we actually took the derivative with respect to capital V and capital V we talk in terms of N V which is P P. Uh, this is like a capital V can write in terms of N V P P and N1 to X. Or we can write in terms of X, which is X1 to X C1. So all those things we have to write uh, derived class class. And uh, what actually we understood the uh, stuff, which is Yes, 
plus 1 minus x1 1 minus x1 so fast we have taken we have done are you studied or something no okay and what is v2 what what is v2 what This is understood, right? Fine. Because this will be j equals to 1 to 0. So only one will be there. x1 dou v dou x1. And then this is dou v dou x1 is there. If I have 1 minus x1. Okay. And if I want to write in terms of x2, what will be the formula? Because I like x2. I want to write in terms of dou v dou x2. This will be x2. So it will be v plus x2 dou v dou x2 dx2 dx1 what will you come what is dx2 by dx1 x1 plus x2 equals 1 ok so dx2 by dx1 is minus 1 right so it is v minus x2 dou v by dou x2 so then you can apply for this kind of stuff where your molar problem versus x2 will be given so similarly v2 bar what will be the formula from here what is the formula from here? C equals to 2 means it is 1 to 1. So, V minus X1 into dou V by dou X1. So, what it will be in terms of X2, what will happen? Minus 1 minus X2 dou V dou X2 dou X2 dou X1. So, it will be V plus 1 minus X2 dou V dou X2. Very important relationship. This formula will be used for experimental determination of the partial molar property that you can go to lab up to the class or whatever, whatever you are free. You have, you can directly apply your formula and determine the partial molar property. So, you can actually have molar volume which is V meter cube per mole by mole fraction of the second component. We can plot. Okay? That means what? We can fix up the first component, take some water, keep on adding ethyl alcohol. This tube is there, measuring cylinder is there, keep on adding ethyl alcohol. If you take, keep on adding ethyl the, the alcohol, now amount of ethyl alcohol will be changing. Not only that, the mole fraction also will change ethyl alcohol. Molar volume, how to calculate? From measuring cylinder, you can get the volume, but that is not the molar volume. You have to get the molecular weight of this and the fraction with that. So you can get the total molecular weight. And if you divide that with the density and all those things, you can get yesterday what you have done, the calculation, which will give you a good point. So every step your calculator should be handy. Okay? And what you get, you will get this type of in the lab. So take a measuring cylinder. Take water, keep on adding ethyl alcohol, measure this. I think, I hope some of you will do the lab experiment and show you, show me the result with the graph paper. Maybe, you know, I don't know, we'll do that. But if you can do that, it will be good exercise for you. Okay? And we have to calculate. Now, the thing is that we, is, is, it, is, it, is it okay, this graph? How to calculate V1 by V2 bar? That's what I am promising. From experiment, we have to calculate the partial molar product. So experiment to calculate partial molar property. So what we can do, this, this coordinate is Vx2. Right? Any not this, any coordinate you take. I'm just taking this one. If you are not, if you are saying that I am very biased, I will take the coordinate here. Vx2. Tangent I can draw. I can draw the line. Okay. What's the slope here? So this is my V. V 
this is my x2 according to Fourier geometry. Okay. So v minus x2 dou v x2. So what will be that? V minus x2 dou v x2. This angle is theta, tan theta is dou v by dou x2. Same thing. These angles are equal, right? From geometry. This I am saying P. So this is D, this is E, this is B, and this is a, F and this is C. C is the origin. You can see. This is D, E, B. This is A, F and this is C. Now tell me from geometry, what is your V1 band and what is V2 band? This we are doing the graph paper. This we are doing the graph paper. What is your, from the geometry, what you can actually talk about the V1 band? So V by P E is what? So dou V by dou X2 and theta. Right? V by P V E by P E is tan of tan theta. Correct? So what is P E? P E this much. 1 minus This is 1, this is 0. This is 1 minus x2. Okay? And then B is what? 1 minus x2. Yes or no? This is 1. The 0 1 scale. This is 0 1 scale. x2 is more fraction. Lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1. So if this is x2, this will be 1 minus x2. Right? So what we have to find? So V we have found this much is like this 1 minus x2 dou V dou x2. This is V. So this will give you V1 1. Sorry, sorry V2 1. Yes, this will give you V2 1. So we have found this much is your V2 1. Right? <coughs> we found this much is a V2 1. What is B1 bar? B1 bar is B plus x2 dou V do, minus x2 dou V x2. So now we take this and so this when you uh, when you did it, you consider tri triangle B P E. Now you consider triangle A P F. What is tan theta? A by P F. Right? A by P F is dou V by dou x2. Right? What is A by PF? What is PF? X2. PF is X2. So what is F? X2. No V, no X2.
So this will give you V1 bar. So this is the geometry you have to draw, and then that's it. And you can go to the lab and can, and at least for the binary property you can verify the formula. So that's the way. And now from here you can calculate. So that's why you got the problem you started. And that problem you could have actually wondering, you would have been wondering how they have calculated it. This is the way you can calculate. Similarly, you can do it for the partial molar, partial molar property, partial crisp energy, partial uh, Helmholtz energy. But why it is why you cannot do in the experimental because you cannot measure Helmholtz energy and crisp energy. In that you can measure somehow. Internal energy you cannot measure. Best thing is the partial molar volume. It's very easy to measure. You know? That's what we actually do. So now I will talk about something called Gibbs Duhem equation. Uh, for the partial molar property of the body and what we are trying to prove so this one is quite clear right Exper experimental determination of uh, the partial molar value any confusion any doubts no doubts ok so we are now working on we will be talking about Give Duhem equation and we have to show that two things summation j equals to 1 to c xj dou v j bar dou xj equals to 0 or summation j equals to 1 to c nj dou v j bar dou xj equals to there is a gift to an equation for the for the mixture in terms of and this is valid for any partial molar properties I will be showing for the vj bar you can go home and try to see for the gj g bar gi gj bar aj bar aj bar whatever whatever partial molar property is available this will be valid then this was not there for the pure substance the pure substance is shown this one will come or the XJ all those things will not come. How to approach for that? And thing is that if you prove, does not mean that it is automatically proved. I will show that. You have to prove separately. Somebody will be taking and say, okay, divide by n. You, uh, you, you multiply by n. But if you multiply by n, things are not that straightforward. Okay? It is, it don't come directly. So that will, will uh, show now. So our uh, formula is V equals to <coughs> summation XJ VJ bar. Okay, and it's a function of if I want you can say that the function of P P X1 to XC minus. Bar by 2x plus uh, 
So this is valid for up to uh, c minus one. One is one is for the c. Okay. So let's see the next step. We have x c equals to one minus summation j equals to one to c minus one x j. So do x c do x i equals to what? What is do x j by do x i? First we have to, then we will come here. What is do x j by do x i? And first of all, why I wrote separately? The two things I am actually asking. Why I wrote separately? I should have written j equals to 1 to c. Why I wrote separately? Because if you look at the expression for the vi bar, it is different from vc bar, right? If you look at the expression vi bar, it has got different relationship with with vc bar. Okay, vi bar up to less than c, we have one relationship. vc bar one term is gone. Only there are two terms, right? Okay, so that's why I wrote up to c minus one one c different. Okay, this question I was expecting from you guys. Secondly, what will be do xj by do xr? I have discussed earlier. Do xj by do xr. What is do xj by do xr? Do xj by do xr. What is that? Any hands, please? Do xj by do xr. Is it zero? If you are confused, then you can actually put some five, six, something like that. What is do x5 by do x10? Huh? What? What? 1 minus 1 plus. You don't complicate the life. What I am asking that? Do x5 by do x10 is how much? 0. Do x5 by do x5? 1. So, what should I write then? This one is 0. Somebody is saying 0, somebody is saying 1. Man, I have discussed all this. We are not looking at your plus notes. That's a problem. I have discussed all those things. <coughs> 0 and 1, both are correct answer. Delta IJ. I am doing it so many times, but you are not responding to me. Delta IJ. Because I know it. This I and J equals to 1, they say, they are saying, if they are different, it is 0. That's what I have, I have done in the class. And if summation is there, then delta j gives me summation in both for this for this guy. And what you will get? And what is the expression do x c by do x i? How much you get? One do x c by do x i zero. First term then. Second term j equals to one plus c minus one delta j. Correct? Yeah. Summation delta j means summation will go. And what will happen? <coughs> If summation goes, what will actually happen? If summation goes, and I am really shocked. Summation j equals to 1 to c minus 1 delta ij. Delta ij equals to 0. If i not equal to j, summation is there. Summation delta j equals to summation will go. Delta ij equals to 1 if i equals to j, right? So, so what will actually happen if you if you I don't know how many times I'll tell. It will be, if you expand it, it will be delta I1, delta I2, and it will be delta I C minus 1. Okay? So, what will actually happen? Do I C by do XI? Yeah, so then what will actually happen? Do I see by do I side? Is that correct? Yes? Yes? Correct? That's all. 
you want to. So, what will actually happen? Next step. First term is what? J equals to 1 to C minus 1. Xj rho bj bar rho xr. Correct? Second term. Will be what will happen for second term? B, B, summation j equals to 1 to c minus 1 bj bar delta ij bj bar delta ij what will actually happen you could are so afraid they can't even tell boldly even if you are wrong so you can tell plus <coughs> provided i is less than c equals to c Provided i is less than equal to c, right? Plus, what actually happens? X e rho b c bar rho x i minus. Am I correct? Rho x e by rho x i goes to minus one. Correct? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Fine. Next step you can write j equals to 1 to c xj rho bj bar by 2 xr. This we can combine. Okay? And we have v i bar i less than equals to c minus bc bar. Okay, what is v i bar? And what is bc bar? We have it in your book, right? What is bi bar and what is bc bar? Quickly tell me. V plus do v. I cannot hear you what you are talking. You should be like my voice, otherwise, you know you cannot command in your company. Right? Anybody else who can have a commanding voice? Who can tell me the formula? The formula is in your exercise book. I am just expecting at least one hand. You have to just read from the exercise from your notes. What is bi bar? For i, I not equals to c and i equals to c. It is there in your exercise book. Pardon? What is that? B, B plus? Yeah. If you if you delta IC if you don't actually if you just remove it because that is if you have one minus delta IC then you don't have two different formulas okay j equals to one to c minus one xj rho b by rho xj and what is this formula minus j equals to one to c minus one xj rho b by rho xj and what is v i bar i not equals to c minus b c bar equals to how much you go subtract from here. You go subtract from, from here, what will you get? You go subtract from this with this and this. This is the extra term. So it is nothing but rho b by rho xi. Man, you should be telling that. You go subtract only rho b by rho xi is coming. So this is nothing but rho b by rho xi. So this rho b by rho xi will get cancelled. And what will you get? Summation j equals to 1 to c xj rho bj bar rho xi equals to 0. This is the gibbs duran relationship. That means what? When you have the partial dual property calculated from any expression, if you have a polynomial, you can actually check whether this expression is satisfied. This is just like a continued equation of mass balance. When the partial dual property is evaluated, this balance has to be satisfied and which is nothing but the gibbs duran relationship. Any question on this derivation? You see a trick of the derivation? Trick is here. You have to, you have to, you have to speak out because the entire partial molar property formula behaves two different ways. For i less than equals to c, partial molar property formula is one. For i equals to c, another form. Because of delta function, one minus delta is. So that's the way it actually behaves. Okay. In fact, you could have written directly here. Uh, this entire stuff, then you have to be writing all the partial molar property formula, you know, in a 1 minus delta IC. It will be very complicated, rather to have actually separate because you know the formula separate. 
Any question on this derivation? Any doubts, confusions on this derivation? Any confusion? Any doubts? So then can you derive the next formula? Summation nj rho vj bar rho a na equals to 0. In terms of nj, can you derive this? Summation nj, I will come to this part of the report. This derivation is very straightforward, not that complicated. This derivation is very, very straightforward. Summation j equals to 1 to c, nj rho bj bar rho ni equals to c. I think you can go home and do it. It is very straightforward. Okay, we will go to the assignment problem. Next problem, what we have did yesterday. I think last two problems are going. I think problem number 8. At 300 k, 1 bar pressure, the volumetric data for a liquid mixture of benzene and cyclohexane are represented by some formula. V is 190.4 minus 16.8 6x minus 2.6.6 x square. Where x is the mole fraction of benzene and V has the units of meter cube per mole. With the unit of meter cube per mole. Find expression for the partial molar volumes of benzene and cyclohexane. So this is problem set 3.
tell me first what is divisible by anti power. What is divisible by? So what is divisible by? Any answer from you guys? Do you want one? Any answer for do you want one? It takes so much of time. Means 
which is uh, it is equals to one, which is going to zero here. Infinite dilution, which will be going to zero. X two or X one. So this I will say that X one going to zero. Another will be that is H two infinity, X two tending to zero. Infinite dilution. And this infinite is infinite dilution. Dilution means diluted, complete diluted. This x that that part is equal to zero. And if you just put in the limit, you will get the h1 bar infinity, h2 bar infinity. And then again you verify with the dial this dual relationship is true, satisfied. Okay, so quite often we talk about uh, heat of mixing, right? What is that? Or enthalpy of mixing. So now we have a right time to talk in thermodynamic perspective. The heat of mixing, internal rate of change of energy, and all those things. So, we introduce the two concepts here Ig and IgM. Ideal gas, ideal gas mixture concept. So, any mixture, V mix, now we know that, which is I equals to 1 to C, Ni, Bi1. Right? Or you mix internal energy, it is summation i equals to 1 to c, ni, ui1. And these things function of tp x1 to xc minus 1, similarly tp xc minus 1. If I want to have delta u mix or delta h mix, this this will visualize better. Rate of change of enthalpy mixture. A mixing enthalpy. Right? This is the kind of thing we have. The theory of chemistry should be interested. How to calculate heat of mixing? That is very important. Right? Heat of mixing calculation. What is H mix? I equals to 1 to C Ni Hi bar.
Then how is the function? If you want to look at much more mathematical perspective, it is n i h i, which is a function of p p n one to n c, and h i is a function of only temperature and pressure. Because the pure, when I say pure, it doesn't have function of number of molecules because small h is a specific property. In fact, if you want, you can write x1 to xc minus. A specific property is only function of temperature and pressure. And that's a function of all. So those guys we interact with. So what actually happens? Why this partial molar property comes when you mix up? You pour everything. Then all these molecules will interact with each other. Okay? And that's why this HI bar will actually come. And which is nothing but this is one talk about. This is do H by do N I T P N J J not equals to one. This is coming because of all the you are you pour all together and then try to interact. And this quantity will evolve. Okay? What actually happens? Delta H mix equals to zero if you have ideal mixture. Ideal mixture means concentration of each component is very dilute. They are all dilute, very small. In that case, H I bar equals to H I. The heat of mixing equals to zero. The heat of mixing equals to zero. H I bar equals to H I. And when H I bar equals to H I, when the interaction between them is negligible, that means these very cool molecules are very far. They will individually and like molecules will not interact with each other. Each other. That is already counted. Only unlike molecules will interact with each other. And the interaction is more prominent if the more number of moles are there. So if it is a so if it is infinite dilution, so or ideal system, in that case H I bar equals to H I and heat of mixing equals to zero. So we introduce the two concepts here, ideal gas and ideal gas mixture. We are imagining this even this is also valid for the gas gases. So let's talk about the IGN IGN because at P tending to zero system behaves ideal, right? At P tending to zero, IG and IGM. Always we say P tending to zero. We have done the departure. Ideal, so system will behave like ideal gas, mixture will behave like ideal gas mixture. Okay? So ideal gas consists of atoms or molecules which are independent of each other. So first thing is ideal gas. Consisting atoms or molecules, atoms or molecules which are independent of each other. Number two, these atoms, so you can actually write down these atoms or molecules do not occupy any volume. And there are no attractive forces between them. This is valid. I am talking about Ig and Igm. This property is valid for Ig and Igm, not for any mixture. So number two property is these atoms or molecules do not occupy any volume, and there are no attractive forces between them. Number three, therefore, if two ideal gases are mixed, if therefore two ideal gases are mixed, the properties of one ideal gas. Are not influenced by the presence of second ideal gas. Number three, therefore, if two ideal gases are mixed, the properties of one ideal gas are not influenced by the presence of second ideal gas. I repeat once again. Therefore, if two ideal gases are mixed, the properties of an ideal gas, one ideal gas, are not influenced by the other ideal gases. Before ending, I just want to give you the glimpse of idea. On the equation of state of the mixture, we have not come into that point. So I think we have got now the concept of because PV equals to RT is the ideal gas. Ideal gas mixture also PV equals to RT. The thing is that how to calculate D for that case, and in fact for the Vanderbilt equation for the pure substance. For the IG, for the IG we have P plus A by B square into B minus B equals to R T for I G. What will happen for the I G? 
So for mixture, let me talk about cost mixture. This is not for IGs, for the real gas. Sorry. So P mix equals to RP by B minus B mix minus A mix by B square. And what is A mix? A mix equals to summation I equals to 1 to C, J equals to 1 to C, AIJ, XI, XJ, there are more fractions, and AIJ is generally given, which is obtained from, so each molecule have A, I, the Van der Waals constants. Van der Waals constants of pure substance are given. If they are given, you try to multiply, and that's it, you can, for each pair, you can actually, so you need that each pair for the summation. Each pair of summation, if you, if you plug it in, you get A mix, and you can get B mix, which is summation J equals to 1 to C, B J X. So it doesn't matter about the interaction. So A is actually the interaction parameter, B is for the volume correction. So you just take each B for the volume correction, multiply, put on volume, you can actually correct. So B, because you know that this is the volume correction. So it needs only the individual molecules volume. Okay, add it up, subtract, you can get the connection. This is for the interaction parameter, and that's where we need to have interaction. And we actually assume that it is pair interaction. Pair wise, multiple then interactions we are not talking. So that means if you have this many different molecules, so each pair it will actually interact. Whatever pairs that should available, they will interact that way. So that's the way equation of uh, 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 our equation will actually change and uh, we'll uh, discuss next, I think, the departure functions and all those things and we'll proceed further. Thanks for kind attention.